Esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. So, good morning everyone. Um, today we are going to speak on project ideas for the Air, Air, Air Flagship Connect. And my sensation is that we will be near on family, okay? Um, I don't know why it is uh, it is being so uh, or more difficult to uh, to uh, join people around the concept of the flagships, but we have an excellent opportunity today. That is to um, freely exchange um, ideas and knowledge on 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 this point with uh, open discussion. Uh, we don't have any speaker for today, uh, but I am sure that between us, between those that are joining today, we, we can share a lot of different experience and even uh, proposals. Uh, in fact, I will share with you uh, what we are doing from the cluster idea, the cluster that I manage here in Aragon. But before that, I I will uh, I will let um, Nina introduce the flagship. Nina, can you do it, please? Welcome. Of course. Good morning, everybody. So um, just um, a short introduction about where we come from in case somebody has not um, participated in previous sessions on the our flagships. So what we're talking about is the, um, the areas of the recovery and resilience facility that are especially important for um, funding projects. And they are guided by um, the following guidelines that you see here in the slide that we were shared with, um, that we received from Ulla Engemann when she first talked about this um, RRF. So we talk about um, environment, productivity, sustainability, and fairness, all um, contributing to a competitive sustainability as main um, pillars for the National Recovery and Resilience Plans. And altogether, we have seven flagships. Um, Antonio, yes, thanks. Um, we have already spoken about um, power up, renovate, recharge, and refuel. And um, the first one mainly focuses on clean technologies and renewables. Renovate, as it says in the name, about uh, renovation of buildings um, to improve their energy efficiency. Recharge and refuel um, centers around sustainable transport and charging stations. And now um, with Connect, we move on to the rollout of rapid broadband services as one of the major focus points, which is not exclusively, but um, one of the main points. And three others. Um, flagship areas we will discuss them in the next sessions modernize also in the um, context of digitization but um, with a special focus on the public administration scale up um, characterized by data cloud capacities and sustainable processes and the final one rescale and upskill a topic that we have already been talking about a lot also here in the webinars and focused on education and training to support digital skills. And the flagship connect that we want to um, look at today is described in the annual growth strategy 2021. Um, as you can see here, I will read it out. Citizens and businesses in Europe should have access to rapid broadband services. Fast rollout of rapid broadband services to all regions and households, including fiber and 5G networks, as well as developing quantum encryption communication, will be essential to ensure the, wide, the widest possible territorial coverage in areas not served by the market, while at the same time preserving the open strategic autonomy of the EU. While urban areas and major terrestrial transport paths are expected to be covered more rapidly through private financing, the recovery and resilience facility should ensure that by 2025, there is the widest possible uninterrupted 5G coverage of all areas. So it gives us, us already an idea um, um, what the aims are um, for, for the future projects. And what can we, we invest in? 
um, as we're talking a lot about investments and reforms um, on a big scale for this um, res uh, resilient recovery facility, we can invest, I imagine, under connect a lot of in, in infrastructure, as you can see here as fixed capital um, to be invested in. But we also have the possibility to create investments in human capital as well as natural cap um, capital. Um, talking about um, education, training, and skilling, but also share of renewable natural resources and protecting the environment and mitigating the climate change as one example. And all of the projects, um, they should have a less um, a lasting Im impact in the European market. So not just a short-term project, but it should be a transformation. And there are several um, draft templates for member states to draft the projects um, that, that um, also include the flagships, as you can see here in this example, um, to prepare the projects and to, um, to set, the, set the baseline. Thank you very much, uh, Nina. Thank you for your introduction. So, as I said before, we are today near in family. Uh, it's a pity because we don't have uh, uh, anybody uh, from the Commission side to speak about their priorities. But uh, so we can we can imagine uh, based on this on this text. Okay, and I want I wanted to, uh, please. To ask, this is an open dialogue, so don't hesitate to interrupt me. Okay, it's a kind of today is a kind of uh, work group. Uh, but I have uh, we have experience and proposal and this area, so I will share them with you, uh, just as inspiration for the dialogue. For me, connect the connection to the to the companies has been one of the biggest area of fighting from, from our cluster during the last 16 years. And uh, why? Because generally speaking, and this is our big reality, not very commonly uh, or very openly spoken about, um, the citizen has uh, far better connection links, at least in Spain, than the companies. Why? because it's far uh, more profitable for the telecommunication companies to uh, uh, to go with a fiber optic cable to a building where they have probably i don't know 50 uh, 50 uh, connection 50, 50 contracts than to um, and this in one square is something like 1000 uh, it's far cheaper that and far more uh, profitable, as I said, than going to a industrial polygon, industrial area, where for the same number of contracts, they can, they, 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 they need to invest a lot more effort, fiber, infrastructure, and so on. And we, <laughs> I, 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 I had one work group working on this at very high level here in Spain for four years. At the end, we lose. We lose with against the big companies, the big telecommunication companies. I need to, do, to say that very, very clearly. And this is one of the, uh, for me, in some countries at least, but not only one, <laughs> uh, one of the biggest barriers that we have in the companies, okay? Because we are dealing with be, uh, mostly not so cheap um, communication uh, contracts. If you want to have a, a good uh, communication link, and this is a limitation important, for example, for in the industrial polygons, uh, for the SMEs that wants to share services. Not so important for those that are in, inside the city because it's far cheaper, but yes, for those that are outside. This is one point that I wanted to, to share with you and put it over, over the table. Uh, 
another point, uh, speaking about 5G, uh, because we are uh, we are having a lot of uh, conversations, um, or, yeah, ideas and projects on 5G here, and uh, we were in a um, meeting by the conference past Monday, two days ago, with the State Secretary of um, Spain on, on on communications, speaking out 5G. One of the big limitations for um, not limitation, yeah, bottleneck is not the infrastructure itself. But the, yes, we will speak about infrastructure, but the infrastructure will be implemented by big companies, meaning uh, Telefonica, uh, Orange, Vodafone, and so on. And there is a fight, you know, around uh, how to, how to, or how dependent could we be of one brand or another. But the battle, the main battle is to create services over that um, infrastructure and to create um, companies leading uh, the market on those services. And um, we are speaking about use cases for the for the companies because the, the use cases for the common citizens uh, i am a common citizen also most of the time but uh, it's quite clear video video conference uh, interactive uh, serious games could be okay that's quite advanced by now but for companies it's different Okay, and we have been working a lot on on possible uh, application of this technology. Uh, I, I, I probably most of you know about what is 5G. Okay, but for those of you that doesn't know so well, we are speaking about a wider but uh, capacity for of communication. So we could. Um, and quicker also, not only wider, but quicker. And um, every uh, antenna, every um, receptor has a far wider capacity to receive connections. That's the basic of it, okay? Uh, but the problem for the, for the companies is what to do with that. Uh, for what do we need real-time communication? For what kind of applications? It's not so clear, okay? Because um, uh, mostly now our technology doesn't require this kind of real-time applications. If you think about it, even the uh, projects related to ma data manufacturing, okay, uh, mostly doesn't need real-time. And why? Because we are not reacting with the data. We will need real-time if the data will, um, will, will make immediate reaction uh, on the flows, okay? So if, if uh, it will make sense if my factory, my machines, my lines were working on a, on a basis where the data generated and transmitted to the cloud will, uh, will, will come back immediately with uh, some decisions on over the data. But that is not the case and it will, in our analysis, I could be wrong, but in our analysis, it will not be the case for many years. And why? Not by the communication speed, but by the critic criticity of the communication. So if you trust all your factory work on one connection to the cloud, you could have serious problems by attacks or technical technological problems, okay? Uh, it's not so um, trust, trustable, you know? Uh, so I doubt that many companies will uh, really uh, depend on um, depend on uh, 5G communication for their 
uh, their um, real work. For sure, there are cases where it's clear the, uh, the, the use of that kind of technology. Perhaps, for example, um, telemedicine. If you are operating using these uh, kind of lines, or perhaps it will be critical for the autonomous cars. If if you are taking decision based on the real time information, but it could be because uh, the there could be a network of data about what are the driving conditions in a specific road or highway at, at any moment. So those are the kind of cases that are mostly clear now by now. But what we can do in the in the the clusters, I think, is work on helping our companies to. Uh, define those business cases, those uh, services, advanced services over the 5G network, or not 5G, over fiber optic, optics also, and, um, and um, not only define those services, but also we can help them to be prepared, to have the talent, to have the people, to have the uh, technology, you know? And we have been doing that. I, I'm not speaking of theory, okay? And uh, how? Uh, with projects related to this near real-time or real-time um, answers to uh, services, we have uh, an idea we have had for many, for many years, well, five years right now, uh, some common infrastructure on cloud, on, uh, in our case, Amazon slash um, Azure, a common structure for prototypes on um, on this kind of data flows, you know, um, and we had we have also promoted uh, some projects related to uh, prototypes on 5G. This is about common infrastructure for the cluster, or for the cluster members. But also, one of uh, another area quite important in this point is uh, that related to the talent, as, as I said before. And, and in that point, uh, we uh, created uh, something that we call the e-leadership school. Okay, for those of you that as know, we are located in Aragon. Spain, Amazon, Amazon Web Services, no Amazon, the selling shop, okay, but uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, that is one of the, I think is one of the three biggest data provider of the world, just for those of you that doesn't know, Amazon is kind of Microsoft, I think it's the, the data provider for the um, USA uh, Army, for example, so it's uh, the highest level on on, on data data pro uh, providers. Amazon is coming with uh, to Aragon, sorry, with three um, big data centers and in what they call Amazon Web Services, and um, that means that we will have here the uh, the key data infrastructure for uh, the suit of Europe or one of the key ones, okay? Um, and we have uh, agreed with, and I, I mean, we have developed a, ma a project, big project, with many of our members involved on, on it, and in, in collaboration with the regional government, okay? We have proposed for the recovery plan, one project that we have been working for one year and a half, it's not new, but we have been defining it, and now the proposal is to launch it with the Recovery and Resilient Facility to um, develop a industry over those um, data centers. 
meaning we will have the data center very near us so we can we are able to connect directly by fiber optic to to the data centers that is not the same as uh, as by any uh, radio infrastructure and uh, based on the capacities and the expertise that amazon will provide us also uh, we propose to specialize the region on um, data management for industry. We have here a uh, strong industry and in Aragon we have the main or the biggest plant of the Opel Opel PSA, you know, the factory of automotive uh, out, out cars. Uh, the biggest car factory here in 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 Europe of Opel uh, and, and um, also, we have BSH, Schindler, uh, many, many other. And so the proposal is to help our members uh, to develop a common project on, on uh, advanced manufacturing uh, with data uh, real-time processing. Okay, and in the in the project we include different aspects. One of them is for sure the the definition of those uh, use cases companies that could develop them the promotion of smes and spin-off um, um yeah the, the the promotion of business incubator center on this area but also the 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 uh, creation of specialized groups able to um, promote open um, standards on this point, link with uh, the DHA of uh, Aragon and um, with the network of DHAs in, in Europe, okay, and also for sure one important side of this uh, proposal is the talent creation, not not meaning not only training, that is very important to say, but also uh, meaning uh, vocation creation, uh, orientation, very important, professional orientation, and the definition of uh, trainings, not only inside the leadership school that uh, is leading the cluster, but also with the, with the universities and meaning in a very, very wide uh, scope. Um, and, and I understand that this is all related to this point, to this, uh, to this connect area. What can we do with the high speed network? How can we uh, really take advantage of it? Because having them without using them is not practical it's not business oriented okay so that was uh, my introduction quite long and i would like to hear comments and questions from you aurora i see that you have some comments Morning. Well, suggestions. Uh, in fact, uh, when something that um, uses the public money is unbalanced, all we have to do, and it's not easy <laughs> when I say all we have to do, I'm not facilitating, um, is to find a way to get the compensation. Um, I gave an example of the construction, at least in Portugal, when municipalities approve a large um, a large construction, like for instance a hotel or a um, large uh, residential area, they they request that the, even without using public money, even with a, with a, uh, only private investment. Uh, to get the approval, they have to do uh, other community things. They have to develop uh, our areas in the surroundings, etc. Not only on the on the place itself. 
Um, so why not to do the same when the projects are for using uh, public money uh, to do the same and, and um, have the exigence to not only uh, serve the areas where the profit will be large, but also to serve the areas where you need the communications. And it's not, I, 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 I wrote for industrial areas, but it could be, for instance, to serve isolated populations, uh, to serve um, places uh, in several some, some points in, in forests so that you have the communications if there is a fire, uh, whatever. Uh, what's needed should be a, a, a counterpart for what they want. I totally agree. But I need to say that they are very, very strong. And uh, I mean, they they are uh, lobby with very, very high connections at sure, uh, sure. the level. And they are very, very influencing. So now, on health also, you 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 can compare on on health the power of the of the pharmacists or of of other kind of companies. It's uh, immense. It's it's really uh, <laughs> countless. They even can um, put a, a, an end to a life, although they exist they exist to save lives. Um, so it's really immense, but you have to fight, uh, and and that can be only done if you start doing. <laughs> I'm not speaking about you. <laughs> uh, knowledge is key on this point. Okay, uh, we found when we start working, it was four years involved in this. We found a, a lot of uh, small letters you know in the contracts and so they 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 agreed on things like if one um big as they as it is so difficult to go to the poly, uh, industrial areas uh, they agree at the central government level that if one company go to one uh, industrial area there is no need no obligation for the rest to go that, in that way, they were not real. Um, uh, um, sorry, uh, no real um, com competition, you know, and it was impossible. You only only had one one possible provider by area, and I mean the biggest right. industrial area in our city. <laughs> I'm not speaking about the small polygons, you know. More areas. So, yeah. On, only with laws we can change that. That's why I'm suggesting this, that each each uh, project has uh, to have the compensation, the public compensation. And if if I'm speaking about the forests, there is no client. <laughs> but uh, there is there is to be a like a map of needs, of public needs, or of private but not well-served needs, so that this could be um, like an exigence to approve a project. It's difficult, I know. It's really uh, difficult. I totally agree. I see that uh, we have with us Gianangelo Velati from Venetian Cluster. Welcome. Buongiorno, Gianangelo. Thanks a lot, Antonio. We were speaking about the uses of uh, uh, real-time communication on different areas and tourism services for tourism is clearly one of them. Okay? Uh, I am speaking about, for example, uh, enhance reality. Okay, the, the possibility, for example, to go with your um, with your phone. Uh, telling you where are you and things related to the places you are beside Hearing them or seeing them? There is a lot of noise on your phone. Sorry, I, I don't hear very well, Antonio. What, what, no. what are you saying? I was saying that uh, one of the key points on the 
we are speaking about Connect, the flagship Connect, okay? Uh, but yeah. Connect is, is nothing without the uh, business uh, application of that connection, okay? The key point here yeah. is to make our companies uh, profit from the connection, from the infrastructure, okay? So we yeah. cannot put just the infrastructure and wait for uh, um, others from USA or China or whatever uh, pro, uh, creating the services that will profit for that connection, you know? And uh, what I said is that um, tourism is one of the areas that can really create a strong uses for the new uh, connections um, infrastructure. I mean, one possibility would be, for example, to create services on guiding the tourist, okay, with voice or by uh, uh, en enhanced uh, reality, you know? Not virtual yeah. reality, virtual is totally virtual. I mean, yeah. enhanced reality is that, that will help you to see the characteristics or the, yeah, the proposals from a building yeah. using your phone or, or intelligent guiding, you know, yeah. meaning, for example, you could use your phone or your car to uh, yeah. allow the, the system to speak with you about what you are seeing, you know, for example, you can yeah. go driving through a city and you can uh, propose the system tell me about the history but or not the history tell me about sports or or tell me about uh, news related to what we are seeing okay you know yeah. intelligent services over the uh, over the car or over the phone or over the whatever whichever you are using okay so uh, in my opinion this is really poorly do yeah yeah um if i can uh, yeah okay so you mean as i understand that tourism can be better exploited if you have at disposal some uh, interesting uh, uh, um, audio visual systems uh, that in this moment especially uh, um, we use like now we are not we are physical presence together now but uh, through video video audio video um and this is this could be a good system even uh, to exploit to to help tourism to continue because tourism yeah. is one of the sector which is uh, the worst worst perhaps affected by this uh, uh, um, sanitary crisis okay if it is an uh, emergency i can agree with you but uh, as I'm uh, in a similar sector and working a lot in uh, the fair sector, fiere, fair sector, um, you know, um, we are trying with, with, with the, the virtual fair to have uh, another possibility to organize meetings uh, present among enterprises, uh, presentation of their products and so on. But it's very, very difficult because with the, the audiovisual systems, uh, you touch only two of our five uh, sensitive capacities. Uh, that means uh, to see and to hear. But the other three senses, you are not able through virtual systems uh, to satisfy the three senses. So uh, for our system, even the bigger, the uh, uh, very big affair, uh, like in Germany or like in uh, Milan or like in Bologna, Rimini, and so they tried to have uh, good results in substitution of physical presence uh, with virtual systems, uh, but results are not very satisfying. And that's the reason because I'm very skeptic about uh, uh, this possibility, even in, in tourism and even in uh, fair sectors. Uh, for example, if we do not receive at this moment public financing, like the first, for example, in Germany, where the situation is better than, for example, in Italy, we are not able to have a concrete uh, alternative system to let 
fair survive. And as I'm from Venice, and the tourism sector is very important because we made in uh, the last uh, 30 years the, the big mistake to point, to, to, to point our attention only to the touristic sector. Now we're suffering a very big economic crisis in Venice because it's very difficult to find uh, uh, virtual ways uh, to have uh, another an alternative to exploit uh, uh, to 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 have a possibility not to let tourism suffering so big crises. So I in some sectors okay, but tourism and fair, you have only two senses <laughs> that are used in this case. So this is of course uh, my experience, my idea. If someone has uh, better experiences uh, to, 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 to divide to uh, better practices. Uh, so I'm very curious uh, and very interested in it. I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. I understand the problem. Uh, the, the question is that the flagships are uh, oriented not just for the next uh, months, that, uh, but for the next uh, something like the next three, five uh, years, three, four, five years, okay? And uh, resilience, building resilience is one of the key priorities, okay? So we should learn for, from what has happened and uh, be more prepared for possible future crises. Um, I understand that you, uh, you, you the tourists need uh, immediate support on terms of surviving, okay? Um, uh, that's out of these um, uh, mechanisms, the, the RRF uh, mechanisms, I think, I, as far as I understand, okay? Uh, the RRF, the Re uh, Recovery and Resilient Facility is oriented to, to build a, a stronger in European industry. Um, and I am quite sure that you will return to the uh, physical uh, parts, but we need to create the, propo the, the proposals to make them, um, yeah, better probably, no? And we could uh, we could uh, we could introduce those technologies that we are developing so quickly now, <laughs> those teleworking. Because why not to? introduce in the first the possibility to uh, for uh, remote um, visitors a mix make hybrid fairs because i'm quite sure that next year at the beginning you will have the uh, hybrid uh, uh, attendance most probably i don't know if uh, I, I i'm not expert in this area so probably i am um Telling something that is evident for you, okay? But um, we need to think. We need to evolve. I, I agree, Antonio. We have to find all ways uh, to reduce uh, this big uh, economical crisis, uh, and uh, these ideas are for sure uh, very, very important to be developed and to be better studied. Yes, yes, I, I'm, I, I agree because it's a way to reduce. The big crisis. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gerangelo. Any other question or comment? Uh, contribution? Vasco, are you working on this point? Good morning, everybody. Uh, well, yes, yes, in fact, that uh, we have um, a big uh, Portuguese project, uh, for instance, focused on 5G that uh, will finish in um, about six months and um, besides the technology the, the main problem is in fact to find uh, applications and uh, the conclusion is that uh, uh, you need uh, those applications if uh, for instance the processing is at the edge so everything that uh, like you said at the beginning that needs a fast uh, reaction a fast response in that case, 5G is, um, is important. It's related to mobility, like uh, cars or drones or 
or even uh, trains. So uh, this is the type of applications. But uh, in fact, my opinion, and, uh, and I'm saying this because we are among friends, is that at this moment, I think that um, investments that are more urgent than uh, just a 5G. And uh, what you mentioned about uh, uh, fast connections to, to um, companies or, or even, even houses, because at this moment, uh, quite a lot of the work is uh, and the studying and the take care and so on is made up uh, from, uh, from uh, residences. So, um, uh, also another problem that you mentioned is about the, the, the industrial parks. Uh, I think the main problem there is because the industrial park region space is, is a kind of a private space. So, uh, the, the operators cannot go there unless they are requested to do so. And usually, um, at least in Portugal, the, those parks try to, to, let's say, try to, to negotiate the best conditions. But I don't uh, identify many problems on, on that list, as far as I know. Uh, another, another thing that um, I think it's, it's important now, um, a few, let's say, a few weeks ago, I think there uh, came a, a information that uh, Europe is, uh, is uh, trying to, to create finally an industrial cloud to uh, fight, let's say, against the United States. I don't know if you uh, noticed that or not. But industrial there what? Was... Industrial what? For cloud. 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 Ah, yeah, from fraud 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 agency yeah for for data for data uh, well processing or for data let's say storage and, and so on and so uh, there i think the 27 countries in europe signed a, a kind of a mou related with that so we is a cloud, uh, cloud. Meaning, meaning a cloud company like yeah, like yes. Yeah, yes, uh, well, to uh, storage data and also interconnected different uh, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. I didn't know. So, yeah, so uh, um, maybe, maybe I, I don't know if I have here the document to let, uh, yes, maybe I can share it. I think. Please, please share it, and uh, as we have, as we have another meeting uh, on cloud services, uh, very soon. In fact, okay. Can you give me the, the possibility to share it, please? Yeah. You have now the presentation right. So, is this declaration? Are you okay. seeing it? Yes, yeah. yes, we are seeing it. Yes. Yes, and uh, it it has um, a few well uh, topics. In fact, this is the information that uh, some people from Brussels told me that Europe was working on this. Uh, when I when I uh, mentioned this problem um, just before um the meeting that uh, that we had and uh, in fact is signed uh, if you uh, i will send this uh, document uh, to you and after you can share it among the people but uh, because this is a public document and uh, uh, it was uh, signed for by quite a lot of uh, important people <laughs> from the different governments so they are focusing here in a, in a kind of a public uh, uh, on an account for public services, but uh, nevertheless, it will have impact also in private uh, things. So, and this is, I think, recent. Uh, there is also, a, well, a new, uh, let's, let's see if I can, uh, sorry. 
Well, uh, I think that's it. I, I will share it. I will send yes, the document. Please, please send us the okay. document and we will share it. And it yes. will be good to have somebody explaining us about these initiatives. If if you or any other one have uh, the contact with somebody that could uh, tell us about it, it will be very interesting because we have another flagship that is uh, related I to this. I think the, w one of the persons could be uh, Khalil Rwana, maybe you can try to contact uh, uh, Ula, and uh, he is the, um, well, I, I think the de director from the DG Connect, or at least is related with that. So maybe he could, um, or someone from the DG Connect could uh, explain a little bit and uh, deal with this. So maybe a contact with Ula could be uh, interesting, just uh, because... Uh, she managed uh, inside <laughs> of the commission, but okay. um, I, I can also find uh, try to find uh, the people. But if you can uh, uh, contact Tula, and uh, she could probably identify someone. But this is an important thing because uh, okay, is a first step uh, towards uh, the the creation of, of infrastructure to to storage european data okay now the main problem is to interconnect these uh, these uh, silos uh, with uh, fast uh, um, communication uh, systems uh, in order to to share all the information and uh, the next step that i hope that commission can put is to create the mobile platform so i think i'm going to push for that what do you mean by mobile platform sorry well i mean that uh, for instance your smartphone today uh, every information uh, the sensors that uh, your smartphone has they go to uh, google or, or apple okay because uh, you have no. ios or you have android no. and uh, and <laughs> as you know um, the smartphone is not uh, used only for personal uh, communication. You use it uh, everywhere. So uh, there are quite a lot of information that is being collected. And, um, all, and that's why I'm saying that uh, Europe cannot fight uh, this situation only with lawyers. They have to build something like they are doing now with the cloud or like they have done with with the Galileo or the Airbus or other things. So if data is so important as everybody is saying, in that case we have to um, look for the means to preserve it and to be able to use it as we want. What can we do from the cluster side? Just call the attention, I think, because. Uh, oh. No, as, no. As I <laughs> we need to engage our companies. We need to. Yes, no, yes, I know. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I share that presentation that I made when uh, I proposed to 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 implement a kind of a, well, not a kind, of, in fact, a public-private partnership in order to build that. So uh, there could be some uh, public money from uh, or or money from the commission money from the private uh, sector and in fact if you uh, if you make uh, some easy uh, contability if for instance you collect 50 cents per uh, sim card in europe and uh, if europe puts again also 50 cents that means that you can have something like 600 billion per year to develop this and so it's uh, it's uh, quite a lot of money, uh, but uh, I think it's important. Otherwise, uh, I think that uh, it will be very difficult to to have a, a kind of a, a digital sovereignty uh, in Europe. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I mean is, uh, what kind of projects could we promote from our site and our members in order to build those capacities those because 
uh, as you know, we don't have a Apple or a Microsoft here, or even a one Huawei. Yeah, yes, but uh, but in fact, uh, let let's look a little bit of uh, of the history behind all this. Uh, we started uh, the you know the mobile communication. We Europe. And uh, after that, uh, after some time, we lose a little bit because <clears throat> probably uh, we forget to introduce some innovation. And uh, in fact, the people on the other side of the Atlantic, they look at that, they, they foresee the importance uh, of this, and they try to introduce some innovations in, uh, in, in this use. Because we are talking about the, the, the almost the, um, the human interface, not the technology itself. Because in fact, the technology, I think uh, uh, quite a lot of that is, is, uh, is European patent, patents. So uh, I think that we have to start again and, and say, okay, Europe can be a kind of a lighthouse again in, in, uh, in, in this area. So uh, I think that we we have to start a little bit in terms of political terms, like uh, this uh, thing of the cloud, because uh, we have we we have quite a lot of um, of uh, platform cloud platforms in Europe, but uh, each country has its own. Sometimes uh, they are not uh, offering uh, the the price is not uh, well uh, appealing. Uh, sometimes also the interface to 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 buy the services is, is not easy, and uh, people go abroad or go to Amazon, to Azure, or to other places. Any comment or question from the attendants? Don't hesitate. Don't be shy, please. Oh. Well, yeah, this is Adrian. I'm just uh, referring to something that I said already in summer when I had the opportunity to attend much more often than now, unfortunately, due to working purpose at the same time. I cannot attend that often anymore. But it's linking to the topic of uh, sustainable investments and just not only thinking about the public financing, so reaching out to EU funding, but also to what is possible to receive from the private capital markets. So one, and and uh, it is such a just situation that more and more sustainable investments are available. So more and more capital for environmental or for social purposes is out there. And, um, and why not all, all also linking it, for example, to 5G solutions or when, when it comes to connectivity in around the clusters and the regions where they're operating in. So, um, so I, I mean, I have an example while I listened to the meaningful contributions from Aurora and from Vasco and from Portugal. There's uh, the Pashtana Hotel Group, but they have, um, it's not about connectivity, but the, the purposes are, in, in, are quite wide in the end. So what they have done around one year ago, they had the idea that they want to construct green hotels, so energy efficient hotels and um, with renewable energies, water efficient, a very good waste management, so linking also to circularity. And they had the idea to issue green bonds. And these sort of green bonds, they can be issued for several social or environmental purposes. It can be also done, I think, in many perspectives, for example, to implement a 5G solution. So what they needed for their hotels uh, was around a capital of 50 million euros. And they issued them in cooperation, I think, with the BBVA bank. And uh, so that they were available to global investors. So investors from all over the globe could sign up and uh, invest into that project with getting an interest rate. And it was so popular that very soon, not only 50 million, but 100 million euros appeared on the desk. And so and the Pashtana group decided, okay, we take then 60 million euros to realize our green hotels. And they were the first ones who were actually really uh, financed with this green bond solution, what is one of these novel sustainable investment solutions. And so, and I th just think that that clusters all across Europe and in your networks, that they can utilize these kind of ideas for whatever comes up. I mean, today we talk about the connectivity and other days we, 
you were talking about circularity and other sustainability solutions that are highly of relevance inside the clusters. So why not having a look into that further and diversify the investment solutions? Just, of course, keep on track with EU funding, what's available, and it's great that these platforms are there. But also the EU provided, for example, this taxonomy for sustainable finance, for what I think is a, is a very good policy tool where it's also possible to look at. So that is something I'm personally working with that, so I'm interested in that, what is going on all the time. And looking into global cases, that is just today came up a case from, from Portugal that was very interesting. They happen all the time through the Climate Bonds Initiative and other green bond tools. They're publishing a lot. There's a lot of things available. So I think this is an, something to look at, just rather a comment, step a bit back to the overall missions of the clusters. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And I will propose to organize a session with you and others on this topic because it's very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, uh, we should contact you and look for one day to speak about this kind of uh, approaches on on financing. Uh, I think that we have your email for sure, no? Yes? Yes, uh, we were in contact once, yeah, in the summer, <laughs> when, as I said, when I had more opportunity to attend more often these great sessions. We, we, we will contact you if you, if you, you want, if you agree. Yes, yeah, please contact me. Yeah, it would be great to, to con and also to discuss this topic further if I have the opportunity. Perfect. Perfect. It will be, I think, very interesting. We, we can speak about that deeply. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Okay. More? I will share with you another news. Uh, I, I commented some days ago that we have agreed here at the Spanish level um, a common proposal to our authorities through the five uh, big networks or four and plus one. Uh, we we agree on, on joining efforts with the Spanish network of technological centers, the network of technological parks, uh, the network of business incubators, the Spanish networks, uh, and AMETIC, that is a, a ICT, the biggest ICT association. Yeah. Uh, so we, together with the clusters, we um, we uh, wrote a letter to the Spanish government, and we had a meeting past Monday with two uh, state secretaries and and uh, the representative of another one, and there were a very exceptional, good reception of our proposals. And now we are working on concreting them, uh, to concrete the legal uh, framework, how can we sign the uh, uh, agreement, how can we participate on the highest level of the of the process of speaking out the recovery and resilience funds for, for, for Spain. And that, uh, I think, is a very good news from our side. That means that we have, we are, we will be, or we will be just on the highest uh, tables to speak about our proposals and to facilitate our members' involvement in the uh, in the uh, in this area in this topic and so i wanted to share it with you as uh, a possible reference for your actions it's not the same to speak only as uh, the network of clusters that going together with all their main national networks of um, innovation innovation agents uh, agents and and say together we want to collaborate in order to really help you in this area. Okay, so I think it's time to close. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, next session this Friday is about modernize. Uh, it's about the digitalization of the public administration. As Nina, we will have 
one cluster speaking about it. Is that right? Um, yes, we will have a Swedish cluster talking about a digitization project that they realized with their public administration in Sweden. Um, telling us a little bit about their experiences and um, possible applications for other countries. So, I don't know, but probably quite a lot of clusters in, in Europe is working, uh, helping the admi public administration on their modernization projects. So, you are invited to join us and to share your experiences. Thank you very much and see you soon, I hope. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.